Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Christine and if you're new here today, thank you so much for joining me. Today we are going to take this very outdated French provincial table and cute little cane back chairs and transform it into something so adorable. So let's just jump in. Okay, this was such a fun project. I had just purchased these eight chairs. There's three of them still in the truck, but I purchased them from Facebook Marketplace with a table. And it's that mismatched style that I don't really care for. And what I mean by that is there's two captain's chairs on each end of the table. And then that taller one you can see in the right hand corner sits between the two shorter ones on each side. And I just don't care for that mismatched different size chair style. And that fabric is actually in really clean condition, but it's that older style that I don't really care for. So I'll take you shopping and I found some cute fabric to reupholster these chairs. The rattan cane back is in perfect condition. In fact, that's the reason I bought the chairs. And these are the chairs in back that I really like, these four shorter ones. But I'm not a fan of this dingy yellow color. In fact, it just looks dirty. It doesn't even look like a color. But there's four of those and then two of the captain's chairs with the arms that I'll definitely use. And then the two taller ones, I thought I'd put them in storage, but I'll show you at the end, they actually worked out perfectly for another project. And then it's got this gold, kind of an older gold that they used to use. I actually like the new metallic golds that they use on furniture. I've used it a ton myself. And so I just have a little bit of work to do to freshen these up and make them super cute. I'll show you the table here in a minute because we're going to change that as well. But it's got the French table. In fact, this is probably a great place to show you that the table that we've been using from our old home, we recently moved if you've been here before, but the table that we brought from our old house is the exact same as this new table I'm doing. I didn't even realize it. They are identical and it just proves that I love that style so much. And then these black Windsor chairs that I love, they served us well in our own home. They fit perfectly in the older home, but this new house, I want something lighter and brighter. There's nothing wrong with this table at all. It's been perfect for our family, but I do want something a little fresh, lighter, brighter. My style has changed as it always does. I want bright, light woods, and I'm excited for this new table to fit right here. So I'm going to paint them, reupholster the fabric, and change it into the cutest cottage farmhouse table you ever did see. As usual, I started out by cleaning everything really well with a degreaser. And there's a better visual because it's against that black door of just how dingy this yellow color it is. And then I did have to do a little bit of repair on these armchairs. They just needed a little bit of wood glue to fix these up. And then once everything was cleaned really well, I do recommend that you remove the cushions and write down the number. You can see right there, I've got the number on the chair. And then I also wrote it on the bottom of the cushion. And I know it sounds simple, but when you're screwing those back in underneath, they do have ever so slight different areas. So if you're trying to put a number five cushion on a number six chair, it's gonna be just a little bit harder. I've done it in the past and that's how I know. So I always recommend numbering the chairs with the cushions to make it easier when you're putting everything back together. So since there is the cane back, I decided to start out with some spray paint and primer 
Rust-Oleum. I just felt like it would get into that caning and rattan just a little bit better in those tiny areas. And after one coat, you can kind of see right there where the paint landed in some areas more than others. So I just gave another coat of the primer just on the caning. This is only the one coat of paint and so such a dramatic difference already. And in between each coat, I do take sandpaper 240 and just lightly sand all of the areas. It just gives a good clean finish. It removes any debris or paint drips or anything of that sort. And then I grabbed my Rust-Oleum chalked paint in linen white. And if you've been here before, you know I love this crisp, clean white. And then proceeded to paint the chairs two coats. And again, I sanded in between each coat. And there again is that contrast, just a bright, cheery white. I think they're turning out so cute. And then I finished everything off with a coat of clear wax and we are on to look for fabric. There is this awesome fabric store that I found a little ways away from me. And so I often go there for inspiration and to get ideas and just find out what the new trends are. I don't know, but I love looking at all the colors and patterns and textures. It just gives me so many ideas. Let me know if you get inspired by looking at fabrics too, but I could spend an entire day looking at fabrics and I always walk out of there with new ideas. And I will say I am currently loving this ticking stripe. In fact, it's one of the choices that I have. And if you've been to my channel before, you know that I've been making these fun green sack pillows I love so much. And I used this ticking stripe fabric for the back of one of them. But I ended up purchasing it on Etsy for about half the price. So I feel like I got a really good deal. And a lot of you have asked me about the fabric, so I'll give you some more details here in just a minute. This is the crushed velvet that I used for my other dining room chairs, I think is so pretty. So now I've got all of these painted and I still wanna take my sander and just lightly sand down where the edges are, ever so slightly, and I'll show you here in a minute, but let's talk about the fabric choices. So here are a couple choices, and if you've seen my pillows, you'll recognize these fabrics because I used some of them. But this one is the traditional three stripe. That's my first choice. And then there's the darker three stripe. And let me know which one you would pick. And then there's the ticking stripe. That's my third choice. Ultimately, I've already picked what I'm going to use but I would love to hear which one you would have used. And a lot of you have asked me where I got these and I'll put it in the comments below, but I purchased them on Etsy from two different suppliers, but there are so many people that sell them there so you can definitely find the colors and the patterns that you're looking for. And I thought they were a really good price. And then my fourth choice is this solid white it's a linen, it's kind of a thicker linen, almost a canvas material. And I bought the whole bolt because A, I know I'll use it in the future. I can always use a good, clean linen white. And B, if I do end up using it on the chairs and there's ever a spill, which there will be, I can always reupholster with the extra fabric that I have and it's good as new. So which one would you pick? So I started by removing all the fabric from the cushions and on these cushions, I've seen them with or without, but these ones happen to have the piping as well. So I had to remove all of the piping staples first. And then once the piping is removed, I could remove the fabric underneath. There are so many staples in this chair and I would never encourage this project for a furniture flip if the bottom line is you wanna make money because time is money. And I will tell you, 
that undoing all of these staples did take me a lot of time. But it's gonna be in my own home, so it's completely worth it. But it did take about 45 minutes per chair cushion to get all those staples out. But I just did it when the kids were doing their homework or we popped in a movie and watched it late at night and I just popped out staples from chair cushions for a couple of days. And I used this tiny little screwdriver and a little pair of pliers to pop each of those out. So on to the table and would you take a look at those legs? I love those legs, they're so pretty to me. And then kind of take a look at the sheen on top of the table. I don't mind the color. I'd like it a little bit lighter, but this is where if you saw my recent oven cleaner video, this is one of the big fails that I'm talking about. And I couldn't figure out why at the time, but you'll see that I sprayed oven cleaner all over the surface of this table. And I waited for about 30 to 45 minutes just to let it sink in and really do its work. And then I'm scrubbing and at this point I am so excited. I can't wait to see the lighter wood underneath. It's just gonna lighten up, right? Well, it didn't. It didn't work. I scrubbed and scrubbed. And again, this was a big failure. And I do think it's that protective coating finish that's on the table, and that's why it can't penetrate through that. So in the end, I just ended up taking my sander. You can tell the difference, I've sanded that side, and I just need to finish this side and the leaves in between. And then I took the legs off the table, and I sprayed them with one coat of the paint and primer, and then grabbed my chalk paint and did a couple of layers of that. But what a difference. I'm loving that light, light wood. And so now that the top is all sanded down, I just wanna determine if I wanna use a natural stain on it. I need just a tiny bit of warmth to the wood, a little bit of a caramely butterscotch color. So I started out with a little test spot with this Restora finish. And if you've been to my channel, you know I love this stuff, but it turned it a little bit yellow. And then I tested out another patch and I forgot to film this, but I took some Early American 25% with 75% natural. So it would just lighten it up a tiny bit. And that's ultimately what I ended up using. You can kind of see there where I've put it on and it'll lighten up even more once it's dried. And then, as you know, our old table had eight chairs. And since we can only use six of these chairs, I went on the hunt for some matching chairs that were more of the size and shape and scale of the other ones instead of the super tall ones. And I found these two beauties and these chairs have seen better days. Now the caning on the back is in perfect condition, but they had painted the fabric and I know that's a thing, but it did not turn out. It is not my style. And in fact, they painted over all of the nail heads, which made it twice as hard to get those out. And you can see all of those nail heads. And I finally was able to pop some of those out, but it was a summer day and I got to babysit this cutie that we often get. She kept me company and made it totally worth it. Dakota, hi cutie. Can you say hi? That's a good girl. That's a good girl. Ah, yeah, that's a good girl. Can you talk to me? I know. So three hours later, I finally got all of those nail heads out and they were in such rough condition, but you can see how dingy and dirty they are. So I just took all of the foam and padding and threw those away. Let's head to the store and get new foam and batting. So I've got my foam and batting, and here's where it gets a little bit more difficult because even though these chairs 
are the same scale and height and width. They don't have the seat cushions. You just have to put the foam down and then staple the batting directly to the chair. And then you staple the fabric directly to the chair, but it kind of has this little curve that you have to follow. And you'll kind of see it a little bit better once I've put the fabric on, but you just kind of have to eyeball it, feel it, and staple it along that line. You can kind of see right there, I've cut off all the excess. I've got the new foam underneath, the new batting, and so now let's get some fabric. And so these two little beauties are looking so cute. I decided to use the three dark stripe on these two chairs. And I know I said earlier that I don't like the mismatched look, but that's the height of the chairs. It's pretty dramatic. But with the fabric, I ultimately decided to use the dark stripes on the captain's chairs and on the two extra chairs that we won't use all the time. They'll be here to the side and we'll pull them in when we have guests or game night. I do still need to put some trim around the edge you can see there of this chair, but they turned out so cute. There's a captain's chair and two of the new chairs. And then on the side chairs, I used the canvas white fabric and it looks just so clean and crisp and cottagey. That way I have extra if there's ever any spills and you can see I lightly distressed the edges ever so slightly just to give it a little bit of character. And I feel like this is a huge success in turning over this old, dingy table and chairs into something bright, fresh, and new. And a little sneak peek and an even better deal, I ended up using these two taller chairs. They didn't go to waste. I painted them and just reupholstered them in this green pinstripe fabric. They turned out so cute and they are now being used in the apartment rental and I am so happy with how they turned out and they came in super handy. We did update a lot of things in the apartment so I'll show you that down the road but for now I'm loving these chairs as well. So I paid a total of $250 for the table and chairs, an additional $30 for the extra set of chairs. I don't know what the fabric ultimately came to but with a little bit of paint, some new fabric, a lot of elbow grease, I am so thrilled with how this table turned out. And I've since seen them on Marketplace and online selling for a lot of money, so I feel like I got a screaming deal. And it's priceless to come into my kitchen every day and you love what you see. So I could not be more thrilled with how this table and chairs turned out. And so thank you so much for spending a little bit of your day with me today. I greatly appreciate it. Please give me a big old thumbs up, comment, subscribe, all those good things that sure does help my channel. And I hope the rest of your day is absolutely awesome. Bye-bye.